bless each other by saying, God saved you to use you. God saved you to use you. Right, God Amen. saved you in order to use you in His work, His good work. Right? And today's public message says, the only good work from God is saving souls with the gospel. Amen. Amen. I want every single one of you to really align your life with saving souls, with the gospel, and may you put your life into evangelism and missions. And you will absolutely experience how God will provide everything in His abundant grace. And that's what we are celebrating today as a Sunday of the Feast of Harvest. Right? Up until now, God has provided you everything. Right? Everyone whines, right? I lack money, my, my life is hard, but up until now, you have lived within God's grace. Amen. Right? Amen. And God has given you grace, God has provided you everything, and God, God has given you specific positions so that you can experience God's scale. Right? Right. What else do you need? You don't need anything else. As long as you're in Christ Jesus and in His grace, right? That must be it. Right? If you try to find something else, that you are not sufficient, you're not satisfied with only Christ. I want every single one of you to be concluded in only Christ through today's worship. Amen? Amen. So before we begin, let us do our confession of faith. Jesus, Jesus is the Christ, the, Christ, the, Son, the Son of the living, living God. God. Amen. And why don't you bless each other once again by saying, God is the shepherd and overseer of your soul. God, God is the overseer and the overseer. One more time. Jesus Christ is the shepherd and overseer of your soul. Jesus Christ is the shepherd and overseer of your soul. Right. Your boss at your company is not the overseer, but the overseer of your soul right, is the triune God. Right? That's why we have to be with God. We have to be within the relationship with God. That is how everything starts in completeness. Right? That's how you start your day. That's how you must start your walk of faith. And that's how you must begin everything, every career, every aspect of your life. Right? Me being inside of God's grace, me being inside of the relationship with God, right? that must be the start and the beginning of your everything. Right? So today's title is God is the Shepherd and Overseer of Your Soul. And before we jump right into the main content, right, from last week's message, it was about the Christian's values, right? And what kind of values do you have within your life, right? As you live your daily lives, you are affected, you are influenced by the values that non-believing friends, that non-believing co-workers, and non-believing friends or your family members emphasize. They say that when problems arise, you need to do something. They say that they teach you that when something happens, you have to use humanism. You must not stand still. You must look for answers, methods with your own effort. However, God's value, the biblical value says, when problems arise, you need to stand still. Why? Because Christ has finished everything. Amen. I want only Christ to become your true value. Right? But when you go out to the field, they teach you something different. Right? You need to show your own presence. Right? You need to make your presence strong so that other people might not look down upon you. However, the Bible says differently. The Bible says you need to experience and enjoy God's presence and the kingdom of God. Amen. Right? People try to show their own presence in their field, in their workplaces, in their families to not be looked down upon. Right? 무시당하지 않기 위해서 나의 존재를 드러냅니다. But the Bible says you need to experience the presence of God. You need to experience the presence of the kingdom of God. Amen. Right? Which one is your value? Right? Which one is your value? When you go out to the field, people say that you can do this, right? You are powerful enough, you are capable enough to carry this out, right? Do not look for help. You are the master of your life, right? However, we do face limitations in our lives. Sometimes we are faced with crisis 
and the hardships that you can't really consult with your friends, your pastors at church, right? But how can you say that you are the master of your life? How can you say that you are powerful enough to carry out everything as you plan in your life? But the Bible says, because God knows that we are weak and imperfect, God promised the filling of the Holy Spirit. I want only the filling of the Holy Spirit becomes your true value. Right? So as a Christian, our values must be different. Right? Only Christ, only the kingdom of God, and only the filling of the Holy Spirit. Right? So that's how you must begin your walk of faith. Right? And last week, Pastor Kim talked about God's absolute sovereignty. Right? God's absolute sovereignty. You living in Korea, you having been born inside of your family, is not by chance, right? You worshiping God at Yewon Church, you carrying out positions at YM is not by coincidence. Right? Everything has taken place within God's absolute sovereignty. Amen. God's absolute sovereignty. If you truly believe in God's absolute sovereignty, you will never be shaken. You will never be influenced by the words of people. Why? Rather, you'll be thankful. Why? Because you know that there must be God's clear reason and His plan towards everything that happens in my life. Instead of grumbling, instead of complaining, and today, Pastor Jung said, instead of making excuses, you'd rather be thankful. Why? Because you are within God's absolute sovereignty. Right? Do you really believe that your life, your entire life, is within God's absolute sovereignty? Amen. Do you really believe so? Amen. Then all you have to do is Restore thanksgiving. Right? The greatest grace, today Pastor John says, the greatest grace that you can express is the thanksgiving of your salvation. God <laughs> saved me by His grace, and God allowed me to believe that Jesus is the Christ. Right? That is the ultimate truth that you need to change your destiny. And God allowed you to understand that very truth. Right? That's why you are here worshiping God as a child of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Right. And if you truly believe in God's absolute sovereignty, right, you can wait for God's perfect guidance. Right? You can really wait for God's perfect time schedule. You won't be hasty. Why? You believe that God is guiding you. God is leading your life completely and thoroughly. Right? You won't be hasty. You won't be worried or concerned about the future, about the life that you're living. Why? Because you do believe that, just as the Friday night service says, your entire life is the hand is in the hand the of, God. of God. Amen. Your life, your entire life is in the hand of God, and the mighty Amen. hand is really holding on to you tightly. That's why you need to have Jesus Christ as the greatest value. Right? Jesus Christ finished the three curses that no one can resolve. Right? Every single way. Pastor John and even myself expressed this over and over and over again. Jesus Christ right, liberated you, right, set you free from the three curses that no one can resolve. The power of Satan, the power of sin, and the power of hell. And there are some newcomers here worshiping together. No matter how successful you are, no matter how wealthy you are, if you are away from God, you are oppressed. You are under the influence of the curses of sins and the power of Satan and the background of hell. No one can deny this. We call this destiny. destiny. Right? You can escape from this with your own power. Right? That's why it is called destiny. You're destined to live within the path of destruction. Why? You are away. You are separated from God, who is the source of happiness and who is the source of life. You are bound to face destructions in your life. However, God sent Jesus Christ, and through Him, God completely resolved the three curses. That's why God, the Jesus Christ, must become your greatest value. And you must find the life-staking value in Christ as well. Right? That's why in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I have been crucified. I no longer live. Right? The reason I live is not for me, but for the sake of Christ. Right? Because Christ lives inside of me, and through his death and resurrection, I have been saved. Right? The master of your life is different, right? The reason for your life is different. 
It is not for yourself. It is for the sake of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. So Christ must become the greatest value of yourself. If, you, if Jesus Christ becomes your greatest value, what happens is you will be able to interpret everything with the eyes of Christ. Okay? And on the other hand, you will come to a conclusion in Christ through everything. Right? Think about an artist. Right? In this term artist, there is the term art. That means artist is somebody who interprets everything with the eyes of art. And he transforms everything into art. That's what it means to become an artist. Right? Same thing. If you are called a Christian, you must be able to interpret with the eyes of the gospel, eyes of Christ, and you must transform everything into Christ. Right? That's what it means to become a true Christian, right? holding on to the genuine value that God has given you. Christian. Right? If Christ doesn't become your greatest value or everything to you, what happens is, even if you are saved, you will live within the state of non-believers, being completely attacked, manipulated, controlled by Satan. Right? Satan cannot snatch away your salvation, but what he can do is he can deceive you and he can put you into the state of non-believers. You're living at the same level as non-believers, looking for what to eat, what to drink, what to wear. That's it. Because your spiritual eyes are completely blind. That's why today, Pastor John says, right? he gave us an, a question. Right? Have you lived your life? If you look back upon your entire week, have you lived your life for the sake of God and His kingdom? Or have you lived your life for the kingdom of Satan? Right? Which way was your life with it? So I give you the same question. Is your life God's platform or Satan's background? Satan's playground, right? So where will you head toward? It depends on your concentration. It depends on your faith. And dep it depends on where you obey yourself. Right? If you truly obey the word of God, if you really have this absolute faith in the triune God being with you, being really guiding your life, right? your life will become the platform where God has no choice to, wor to work upon. However, if you fall into unbelief, if you just chase after things that are physical, tangible, and fleeting, right? Your life will become Satan's playground, even if you're saved, right? That's why we need to believe, we need to go beyond just knowing Christ. Even Satan knows who Jesus Christ is, right? That's why in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, We all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. What does it say? We must reach unity, not just in the knowledge of knowing the Son of God, but in the faith of believing in the, in the Son of God, which is Jesus Christ. We need to go beyond just knowing Christ. I know Jesus Christ, but you fumble. I know God is with me, but you fumble. Why? Because you don't have this absolute faith in your life. Right? In Hebrews chapter 11, 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Do you really want to please God? All you have to do is re restore faith. Right? It's not giving a lot of money, a lot of offerings. It is not devoting yourself to the musical instrument. It is not about carrying out a lot of positions at church, but it is restoring your faith. Even now, as you give worship right now, you need to keep on asking yourself, right? You must pray to God that you can find God's word believable. Lord, may I truly believe in the word that is proclaimed at the pulpit right now. Amen. Right? You need to keep on praying. That's why I always say this. Worship is a spiritual battle. Just because you are sitting here and looking at me and looking at the chalkboard doesn't mean that you are being successful in worship. You may think about, what should I eat after worship? Should I eat check check or... Five Guys, McDonald's, Barara Coast, yeah, right? So worship is a spiritual battle, right? You need to keep on praying, Lord, please 
give me faith to believe in the word that is proclaiming, that is being proclaimed at the pulpit. Right? Amen. And you need to pray that you can believe in the fact that the triune God is with you and your life is guaranteed in Christ Jesus. Amen. You need Amen. to have this guaranteed life that has been given to you. You need to enjoy this. Right. So going into the body, In verse 25, it says, You went astray from the shepherd and the overseer of your soul. That means everyone has a life that has lost hold of the path of souls. Right? The path of souls. When you go to a bookstore, there are many books saying there is a path to success. There is a path to really being successful in stocks and real estate and things like that. And the path to the victory or success in your parenting, nurturing kids and things like that. But there's no such book that says about the path to your soul. There's nothing, there's nothing in the bookstore or out in the world that really describes the true path, true way that you can be reunited with God, your soul being reunited with God. Right? And usually the Bible describes the relationship between God and mankind as the relationship between a shepherd and sheep. And you may, you may know this, that the eyesight of the sheep is really, really bad. They can't really see clearly. Their eyesight is really bad. Right? So that they easily lose a sense of direction. They get lost so easily because they are blinded. Their eyesight is really bad. That means the sheep needs intimate care and guidance from the shepherd. Right? If the sheep go astray from the shepherd, that itself is death. Okay? Going astray, being separated from the shepherd, that itself is death to the sheep. Right? Because the sheep can't do anything on its own. Because they are blind and their legs are short and they are easily fall over, right? And they need somebody to make them stand back. Okay? They can't stand on their own. That means they become prey to wild animals if they go astray from the shepherd, right? What kind of spiritual significance does it give it to us, right? What does it signify spiritually, right? Mankind must be with God, right? This is the spiritual formula, this is a spiritual principle that I always mention, right? The only difference between mankind and animals is that we, only mankind, possesses soul. Because we are created in the image of God. However, because of the incident of Genesis chapter 3, everyone became separated from God. Just like the sheep going astray from the shepherd, they became separated from God. Which means the relationship with God became cut off, became severed, became destroyed. And their eyes became spiritually blind. They may see everything physically, but they can't see God. They can't really know that God is alive and existing because their spiritual knowledge and spiritual eyesight is blind. So they lost hold of the path of their souls once they are separated from God. They have no choice but to go astray. Why? Because they are spiritually within darkness and they are spiritually blind. And from that point on, everyone is born into this world as a sinner. That's why in Romans chapter 3, verses 23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Right? People are bound to lead lives within curses disasters, and destructions, right? And many multi-ethnics who are living in Korea, you have, all, you have come to Korea all the way from your home countries in order to be happier. But there are many more times that you feel unhappy, right? Even if you earn more salaries in Korea, but that can give you true satisfaction, that can give you true happiness, right? right? Why? It is because our soul has, has gone astray from the shepherd 
who is Jesus Christ. Right? That's what the Bible is saying. That is the only problem the Bible mentions in, in the book of God. Right? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And from that point on, if you look at Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, people have become harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Right? Jesus saw the crowd and had compassion, pity on them. Why? Because they are harassed, they are helpless like sheep without a shepherd. So that is why no matter how successful, well, wealthy you are, if you are separated from God, you are spiritually helpless, you are harassed, you are manipulated by Satan. That is the destiny, that is, that is the path of everyone who is separated from God. Everyone. That's why everyone has lost hold of the path of souls. So they are suffering under the curses of sins. Right? Even if they have a lot of money, a lot of success, a lot of cars and houses, they can't get them out from the curses of sin. That's why in Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 5, it says, So they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. Right? Because there is no shepherd. Because mankind is separated from God, they became prey. They became food for all the wild animals. What does that mean? You became controlled by Satan. The master of your life has become Satan, the evil spirit. So as soon as people are separated from God, they have become Satan's slaves running Satan's errands. You think that you are the master of your life, but actually you are actually running Satan's errands. If you are away from God, if you are separate from God. That's why John chapter 10, verse 10, you may ask, what's wrong with being controlled by Satan? Right? John chapter 10, verse 10 says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Right? The Bible describes Satan as a thief. And he says, the only thing that Satan, the thief, does is to steal, kill, and destroy. Satan never gives you happiness. Satan never gives you something good. Right? Satan steals your happiness by being separated from God. And Satan kills your souls. And Satan destroys the image of God that has been implanted within you. And that is a life that has lost hold of the path of their souls, right? They are completely separated from God. However, God is the God of love. He did not just let us live under such misery. He did not let us just live in such suffering and disasters, right? Even though we did not read this verse, if you look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 10, it says, once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. What does that mean? God has given you the solution. God has given you the solution so that you can be under his grace. Right? He has given us the way to live, the path to be reunited with God, who is the shepherd of your soul. And that way is Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why John 14, 6, right? You, know, you, know, you already know this verse, right? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to my Father except through me. Right? That is the only way that God has prepared for you to be reunited with God. So if you look at Romans chapter 5, verse 8, while you are still sinners... While you are within complete darkness, while you are within absolute impossibilities, right? God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us, right? We were supposed to die on the cross. However, our blood cannot resolve our sins. That's why we need the blood of the one and true Savior, that is Jesus Christ. 
Because he himself is God, and he is, himself is 100% man. That's why he is the only mediator between God and mankind. And through his death and resurrection, we were brought back to God. Our relationship with God has been restored. How do you know that? In 1 Peter chapter 3, 18. It says, for Christ died for sins once for all. You don't need any further sacrifice. Why? Christ died for sins once for all. Through his blood and through his sacrifice, our sins have been paid in full. Right? And it says, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. Right? Because of Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection, we were brought back to God, right? Our relationship has been restored in Christ Jesus. That's why salvation can only be found in Jesus Christ, Amen. right? Amen. Whenever you get cancer, saying that you need to go and see the doctor who is, who is an expert in cancer, right? It's not being exclusive, right? So by saying that you must believe in Jesus Christ to be saved, it's not being exclusive, right? It is actually giving you the way to be saved. Amen. So from the moment you accept Jesus Christ and become a child of God, you have nothing to do with sin, Satan, and hell. Why? You have crossed over from death <coughs> to life, right? When you believe in Jesus Christ, newcomers, when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, Nothing happens, not, no changes happen outwardly. However, one specific change takes place. That is that your identity changes. From a child of Satan to a child of God. From darkness to light. Right? That specific change, spiritual change, takes place when you believe in Jesus Christ. That's why from that point on, when you become a child of God, in Romans chapter 6, verse 14, it says, For sin shall not be your master, because you are not under law, but under grace. So why don't we bless each other by saying, You are under God's grace. You are under God's grace. Right. Satan is not your master. Sin is not your master. The background of hell is not your master. Why? You are under God's grace. Right? And Romans chapter 8 Verses 38 to 39. No one can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Nothing. Nothing. You, your life is guaranteed in Christ Jesus. Right? Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Right? So from this point on, right, your life's direction must be different. Your life's direction must be changed. And last week, Pastor Kim says, he mentioned about William Booth, who is the founder of the Salvation Army. Right? He says, my ambition is the souls of men. Right? What is your ambition? Right? What is your desire? What is your hidden motive that you have when you come to church, when you live your daily lives? William Booth says, my ambition is the souls of men. Then what is yours? Right? Our life's direction must be changed. Right? In the field, they have everything except one thing. The gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's why people are spiritually dying and suffering. And they are looking for the answer. And there is no one who can give this absolute genuine answer. So they are desperate, they are spiritually thirsty, looking for this absolute solution. Okay? So you must align your life with saving souls once again. Okay? And that must become your mission. Okay? Your mission is saving souls with the gospel. Nothing more, nothing less. The reason you come to church, the reason you worship God, the reason you live today, the reason you work, the reason you exercise, the reason you hang out with your friends is nothing but saving them with the gospel. Right? That must become your mission. Right? Because one soul 
is much more precious than the entire earth. Amen. Right? Even Jesus says in Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18, verses 12 to 13. Jesus says, If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he is happier about that one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. Amen. Right? Jesus is saying that one sheep right, that is wandered off is much more precious than the ninety-nine sheep that is with him. Right? Everyone is lost. Everyone is wandering spiritually without knowing who Jesus Christ is. That's why we need to have this mission as ours to proclaim and save souls with the gospel. Amen. Right? Amen. Once you have this, when you realize that one soul is much more precious than the entire earth, and saving souls becomes your mission, what happens that is that you will come to realize what true missions is. Right? There are two different words, mission and missions. Mission is literally mission. However, missions is a sangyu. If you truly believe that one soul is much more precious than the entire earth, right, you will come to realize the true missions that God desires. And you will align your life with evangelism and missions. Why? Because you have the clear mission. From that point on, you will fully understand Jesus' great commandment that he gave to us in his final message. We call that the resurrection message. Right? Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20, Jesus says, go to all nations. Right? Because one soul is waiting for you. One soul is dying and wondering, looking for the answer. So you need to go to all nations. And Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 20, right? Go to all people. Why? Because they have everything except one thing, the gospel. That's why they are facing destructions. You need to go into that field. You need to go into the nation and save them, right? Even though you guys are living in Korea, you must always pray for your own, own home, home country. You are the Christ ambassador to save your own home country, right? You need to have that as your consuming passion. Right? One day, if God allows me to go back to my field, go back to my home country, I must be ready. I must be spiritually independent to share the gospel and carry out this life movement. Right? You need to have that as your goal. And Acts chapter 1 verse 8, right? when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power and be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Right? And all this message becomes your heavenly <coughs> heavenly mandate. This is a strong order from Jesus Christ. Go to all nations, go to all people, and to the ends of the earth. That becomes your heavenly mandate, and that becomes your consuming passion. And as a conclusion, now you are with the shepherd of your soul, the overseer of your soul, you need to live the life of an evangelist. You need to live the life of an evangelist. How can you live the life of an evangelist? First, all you have to do is edit the word of God. Can you repeat after me? Edit the word of God. Edit the word of God. What do you mean by editing the Word of God? Simply put, you need to meditate upon the Word. When you go back home today, right, after worship, just don't go out and hang out with your friends, right? Do not Netflix and chill. Do not watch YouTube. What you need to do is meditate upon the Word. Until when? Until you find the covenant that you must enjoy. And that becomes your answer. answer. We remnant to the law, Hananim and Marsum, their Onyagi Chapel Kaji, Hanjipamia, Kuge, they get Habit. You need to meditate upon the word 
until you find the covenant that God gives you as the answer. That's the, that's the standard. And how can you live the life of the evangelist? You need to plan your everything through prayer. Until when? Until you seek God's absolute plan. Until you seek God's absolute plan. And that becomes your accurate responses from God. 우리 렘너트들이 기도 속에서 하나님의 계획을 찾으면 그게 여러분들의 응답이에요. 응답. And third, right? You hold on to the covenant, right? You have the accurate responses from God through prayer. You have found God's absolute plan in your life, and all you have to do is you need to design your own evangelism. Right? According to your title, according to your ages, and according to your positions, there are different kinds of evangelism that you can do. You need to design your own evangelism. So when I go to Mark Carr's house every Thursday, I mention this every single time. The reason God has given you this nice house is for you to be utilized as a spiritual platform, that you can invite many friends over to your house so they can hear the gospel once in their life. That is the type of evangelism that she can do, right? So you need to design your own evangelism. Why? Because even today, Pastor Jung says, every church is within the crisis of spiritually low birth rate, which means churches have no interest in saving souls. They do all, all kinds of activities, all kinds of programs, all kinds of and everything, but they don't do evangelism and missions. You need to design your evangelism. Right? Then you will clearly see the field without the gospel. Then when you deliver, when you relay this gospel to them, and that becomes their solution. Right? So I think these terms are more precisely described in Korean. Right? When you meditate upon the word, you get the answer. And when you pray, you get accurate responses. And when you relay that answer to the other people who are wandering in the field, and that becomes their head up, their solution. Right? So by doing all these three things, you can live the life of the evangelist. Okay, from starting today, may you really restore the meditation movement in your life. Stop being caught up with your own thoughts. May you be captured by the living word of God. Amen? Amen. All right, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the blessing of salvation and allowing us to be under your grace. May we look at the people of the field that have gone astray from Jesus Christ, who is the shepherd and overseer of their souls, and bless us to proclaim the gospel as a unique solution. May we edit the word of God so that we can find the covenant that you give us as the answer. And help us find God's plan through prayer and discover accurate responses from God. And may we design our own evangelism so we can accurately see the field and relay the gospel. And may that become the solution to everyone. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.